In this video, this is the uh, this is the first video of Unit 8, which is uh, about area. And today we're going to be going through some, not all, but some formulas for polygons. Now, um, I, this is going to be one series of videos, and in this video, in this series of videos, I'm just going to give you the formulas, and I'm going to work out more examples. So this is going to be more examples, more application. Uh, my goal is to actually create a second series of videos later on. Um, if I don't get to it now, I don't get to it now. But that's going to be how the formulas came about. So I'm really not going to explain um, how I got the formulas. I'm just going to use them, if that makes sense. Um, so let's start off, first of all, with the basic definition of what area is. Area is just the amount of space that an object takes up. And we're talking about, for this unit, we're talking about two-dimensional shapes, no, nothing 3D, okay? The amount of space that an object takes up, an area is measured in square units or units squared. So every single thing that we do in the end, now think about this for a second. If you walk somewhere, you walk one mile, right? Maybe you walk 10 feet. That is not a square unit. But if we talk about area, if we're talking about the area of your bedroom, the floor area or whatever, maybe we say it's 100 square feet for a 10 by 10 room. Okay. So make sure that you're paying attention to units. That's going to help us out later on. That's going to eliminate some points being taken off maybe if you don't use the correct units in the end. So, um, for instance, if I say it's a square unit, what I'm really saying is this. If I had a 4 by 5 unit rectangle, if I counted the number of square units, I would say that this is a one square unit dimension, whatever that unit might be. And if I count up the number of square units that I have, you would see that I have 20 square units. So four units by five units for the rectangle dimensions, 20 square units, 20 boxes, in other words, that I could fill in, and that represents the area. So, um, um, you might take a second here. I'm going to put this sheet on. You want to pause the video, okay? And when you get done um, writing down these formulas, this is basically the name of the shape. Here's a quick sketch. And notice that the height that is listed is the dotted line right here. It is the vertical height of each of the shapes. Sometimes we call that the altitude of the shape. Copy down the areas. And this is a perimeter formula. Um, but you want to record that in your table. Unpause whenever you, you get a chance to, and you can move forward. Here are a few more shapes. So once again, you're going to want to go ahead and copy these down, pause them until you're done writing them down. Notice in this case, we're talking about 1 half base 1 plus base 2. Well, that looks familiar. If I add the bases up and divide by 2, I'm finding the average, right? And that's the mid-segment. So in this case, for the area formula, you're doing the mid-segment times the height the average base times the height for a trapezoid. And down here, notice this is the only one. This is the one that throws everybody off, okay, because it's not plus. It's not D1 plus D2 like the trapezoid. Notice this one's a sum. This one is just straight multiplication. I'll explain why in that other series of videos. But pause for now. Record these. When you're ready, unpause. Okay, let's start off with a few problems. Let's find the area of each of these shapes. Okay, not too bad. Let's start with the rectangle. How about that? That seems to be the easiest shape. Most of you guys are to the point now where you understand that the area of a rectangle is simply the base times the height. So on this particular problem, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take 13 times 27. Get my calculator out here. And that is, so area is equal to base times height. That is 13 times 27. That is 351 units squared. If I don't know, maybe I put that, okay? Let's go to the parallelogram next. Here's a parallelogram. And notice that I could care less what the slanted dimension is, okay? Now, that's going to help me with perimeter. If I want to find the perimeter, I have to know the four outsides, right? The four outer sides. But for this problem, all I'm interested in is what is the base, and I can see that the base is 9. I could transfer it down here if I wanted to. That's 9 units as well because it's a parallelogram and opposite sides are congruent. But the area for this is equal to just simply base times the altitude times the height, which is 9 times 2. That's 18 units squared. And by the way, if you guys are abbreviated U for unit, I'm okay with that. Let's go on to a triangle. Okay, most of you guys should have this down. By now, you probably know that the area of a triangle is one-half base times height. The reason for that is half of a rectangle. I'll, I'll do that in the other series. So in this case, 
I don't care what, what kind of a triangle it is. It doesn't have to be a right triangle. It doesn't have to be tilted any particular way. Here's what I know. This is the base and perpendicular distance. The perpendicular height is five units. So it's one half times eight times five. That's half of 40. That's 20 square units. Okay, now on to the trapezoid, and this is the one that gets everybody. You do need to find the time to memorize this, okay? Just memorize the formula. See, it wouldn't be right if I did 20 times 11 for the height, or for the, for the area. It wouldn't be right if I did 8 times 11 for the height, because neither one of those really represents what's going on here. Instead, what I need to do is take the 20 and the 8, add them together, and divide by 2, right? Find the average. When I find the average of the two bases, when I find the length of the mid-segment is really what it is, then I'm going to take that number and multiply it by the vertical height, which is 11. Okay, so half of 28 is 14. 14 times 11 is 154 square units, right? So there's a better way to look at it. Is one half, instead of one half base, one plus base two, just say average base times the height, right? One more. This is the other one that gets people because this one doesn't involve any addition, and you guys will want to add after seeing that trapezoid formula. This one, all I have to do is understand that I'm going to do one-half diagonal one times diagonal two. Please memorize that that is a multiplication thing. If I know, now look, to me, this looks like 10. So it looks like I've probably got another 10 here. And this looks like 16 to the middle, which means I've got another 16 here because diagonals bisect each other. So the area of this shape is going to be one-half times, the first diagonal is 20 units in length, and the second diagonal is 32 units in length. Half of 20 is 10, so I've really got 10 times 32, which is 320 square units. So there's five example problems, right? Um, I'm going to call it quits for this video, and I'll create another video in which I work a few more problems.